Okay, and so in the last episode, we used an object to become our fluid. In this episode, we're actually going to go ahead and use uh, inflow. So we're going to have a steady stream of fluid coming into our scene. But I'm actually going to show you how to turn off the water or the fluid, so that way you don't have just nonstop amount of fluid coming in. You can control when it stops and when it starts. It's actually really easy. We're also going to discuss a little bit about volume initialization, so that way you have a better understanding, because if you don't you pick the right one, you can actually have problems getting inflow working correctly. So we're going to go through that as well, and this is the scene we're going to be making today. All right, let's go ahead and get started. As per usual, I'm going to do this live, so you'll see the mistakes that I make, and hopefully you'll learn from them, and you'll probably make your own mistakes, but that is part of learning Blender. Also, this is in 2.79, and I know that 2.8 is out, and a lot of people are looking for it, but for the most part, everything is exactly the same if you're going to be rendering with cycles, regardless of the version, whether 2.8 or 2.79. So... With that being said, let's go ahead and scale a cube by pressing S8. And then we're going to press GZ8 to grab it and move it up on the Z axis by 8 Blender units. We're going to click this box here and we're going to go ahead and select wireframe mode. Normally I just hit Z to work in wireframe mode, but this time it's going to be easier to have that as wireframe. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring in our cylinder. I'm going to go into Z here. And we're going to scale it by 0.5, which basically just shrinks it down by half. And then we're going to scale it on the Z axis by pressing S and Z. And then we're going to press 3 to scale it by 3 blender units. And we're going to hit Tab to go into Edit Mode. And I'm going to press Alt and click right here. And that's going to basically select all of your vertices on the edge. And then we're going to hit I to inset it. I'm just going to inset it a little bit. And we're going to press E to extrude it. On the Z axis is default, but if it didn't default it, then go ahead and press Z when you press extrude. Not too bad, looks good. Yeah. And we're going to hit smooth shading there. And it probably gave it a little bit of a weird bin there, but that's okay. I'm not going to really worry about it because it's just our obstacle. We're going to go ahead and click our physics tab here, click fluid and we're going to select obstacle. We're going to change the slip type to free slip so basically the water is not going to get any kind of friction from this obstacle right here so it'll just slip right out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our volume initialization from volume to shell and the main difference between these two things is that when you're doing when you're working with uh, fluid simulations a shell will work better with an open mesh or a mesh with holes in it. If you're going to be doing solid meshes like boxes and stuff like that, you'll want to use volume. Shell will take care of things like, for an example, the blender head, uh, Suzanne, has her eyes are actually separate mesh, so it won't work correctly. A lot of times when you bring in an object and you set it as an inflow, if you don't pick the right one, you'll get undesirable results. Sometimes even if you do pick the right one, you'll get undesirable results. But you have a better shot if you know what your object has in it. And both, well, that's basically a glorified shell. Uh, I mean, a glorified volume. You, it has to be a closed mesh as well. And this is actually according to Blender documentations, which I'll link uh, in the description of the video. All right, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to press 1 on the number pad. We're going to move this over here. We're going to hit R to rotate it and then Y to rotate it on the Y axis until about there. We're going to drop it on down. We're going to hit Shift D to duplicate and then right click to drop it in place. And we're going to grab the little X axis arrow and move it over here. And we're going to press R, Z, 180 degrees to rotate it on the Z axis 180 degrees. Then by pressing 7 on the numpad, it puts you into top view. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set, actually they're both set, perfect. We're going to bring in our inflow item, which is going to be a beautiful UV spear. Let's go ahead and go to our front view here. 
Let's zoom in a little bit. Move this on over. And then we're going to scale it down so it fits nicely inside of our cylinder. There we go, perfect. Then we're going to hit 7 on the numpad, and that is perfectly lined. I'm going to set that as our fluid, and then this is going to be our inflow object. Now, Volume is fine for this because it's a completely closed mesh. We're going to change the X value to 3, and basically that's going to be the way that the water flows out, the inflow velocity, the speed of which it flows out. And that actually will increase the amount of water that's flowing out. So if you want more water in a scene, you can crank that up higher. We're also going to change it on the Z so it kind of comes out in an angle here. We're going to hit Shift D to duplicate that object. And we're just going to drag it on to this other one. Press 1 on the numpad to line it up a little bit better. And then we're going to press 7 for the top view. And we're going to bring it over there. And then we're just going to change the flow velocity to negative 3. That way the water is shooting out this way. When it's with the arrow, this is positive, and this is negative. Same thing with the Z. Z is positive, down here is negative. And now we just need to bring in... Actually, let's go ahead and turn on and off the water. I actually recorded this once and forgot to mention all about it. Okay, so you see how it's enabled right here? So that means that the water is always going to be on. You want to turn it off, you just uncheck it. So if we click our frame and we set it to 20, we click and we uncheck enable, then we press I, we've now set a keyframe. We actually need to set the first keyframe as well. So let's go ahead and set the first keyframe by pressing I. So if we click this button here, this takes us to our next keyframe. So basically, from here to there, it's going to be on. Once it gets to frame 20, it's going to turn off. And we can continue to do this by just continuing on. If you press uh, check enabled, hit I to set the keyframe. I will set a keyframe. And anything you can check, I believe you can actually turn it off by just checking it and then hitting keyframe afterwards. We're going to continue to do that, so that would be kind of a on-off effect. I'm going to do it one more time for this object. We're going to click it and then press I. Now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to turn it off in the beginning. Hit I. Actually, we should have probably started from the beginning. See? Mistakes. They're always going to be made. We're going to turn it on. Hit I. Go to... 20, turn it off, hit I to set the keyframe, and we're going to just rinse and repeat this until we get to the end. And I think that would be good. Alright, it probably won't be exactly like the video I showed you because I don't remember how I set the keyframes, but it'll be good enough. Press A to bring in a new object, your cube. I'm going to go ahead and press 3 on the numpad. We're going to bring it up to about there. We're actually going to scale it on the Z and shrink it down just a little bit, whatever feels right. Then we're going to hit S and we're going to hit Shift Z to scale it on every axis except the Z axis. So we'll restrain it to about there. Perfect. Now we're going to hit tab to go into edit mode and control R to add a loop cut. And basically that's just going to add some more geometry if you're really new to Blender. You're going to left click to drop it, right click to set it in place. And we're going to select these two vertices by clicking each one of them while holding shift. And we're just going to bring it on up. Yeah, there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and set this fluid as an obstacle. And we're going to also change it to free slip. So that way the water just slips right on down and goes down here in this little puddle. Alright, so I'll make sure everything is good to go. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and hit fluid and select it as a domain. And we're going to set this for about 200. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more precise, I recommend cranking it up to 300. As the resolution gets higher, the particles of the water get smaller. So if you had a really low, like 100 here, you'll actually see water outside the object here, and that looks really, really cheesy. So the higher the resolution, the finer the particles, the, the more control you have over the particles, and the more chances they're going to stay inside of the object and not seep out. 
But there's other ways to hide it, and I will show you that when we go on to the next part. All right, and we're going to keep the time at 4 because we're going to change this frame rate to 120. Viewport display, I always recommend doing final if you're going to have it coming out of an object so you can see closer to what it really looks like. Other than that, let's go ahead and bake it. Okay, so we have it all baked out here. And you notice that with the viewport set for preview, you can see a lot of water seeping out of the actual object here versus final where there's less. And as you were to get higher with resolution, you'll get less and less. I believe 300 just barely has any showing. But a really easy way to get rid of it if you decide to run at a lower resolution is click on your object, click on the wrench icon right here, which is your modifiers tab. Go down to solidify under generate, click solidify, and change the offset to one. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to make it a little bit thicker on the outside. If you had a negative one, it would be thicker on the inside. So I'm going to crank that to one, and we're just going to raise the thickness to 0.1, and it pretty much gets rid of all of it. You, if you really wanted to be picky, you can keep clicking until it goes all the way, but we're going to leave it at 0.1 because we're going to make the actual object translucent, so it's not going to really show up much in the renders. And then do the same thing on this one. Go down to Solidify change it to where it extrudes it on the outside, 0.1. There we go, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, go ahead and change it to Cycles Renderer, then press Shift-Z, and then we can see what we're working with. Click on your World tab here, and these are your World settings. Click Use Nodes, and I'm going to go ahead and crank this all the way up, and then I'm going to go down to Ray Visibility and Uncheck Camera, so we have a nice white light but we don't have it showing in the background so it's nice and black and now let's go ahead and set our fluid I'm going to click on the cube go down to materials we're going to use notes and we're going to actually do a glossy material and we're going to change it to kind of a blue color let's change a few frames here so we can see it I'm going to change it I'm going to change the roughness to about 0.2 and then I'm also going to hit smooth shading on it to give it kind of a smoother look. So I think I want it a little bit darker. Let me bring it down. There we go. And you can always change it to glass and change the ORI to 1.34 if you want it to look more realistic. But I kind of like the reflective glossy look. So we're going to change it back to that 0.2. All right, cool. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this object, and we're going to set the material for that. We're going to click New. And we're actually going to kind of give it a shiny look. So you're going to click on Anisotropic and change the color down to kind of a gray color. And change the roughness to, let's do 0.5 to start. I'm going to raise the Anisotropy all the way up. And let's move the frame so it's a little bit less water. Okay. Now, if you want to change this pattern, you just change the rotation of it to whatever you like. Let's kind of just leave it like that. Perfect. All right, this one, we're actually going to make it a glass shader. So I'm just going to keep repeating the process and, and adjust it to the way we like. I'm going to leave the ORI about the same. It's not too super critical on what the ORI looks like. I O R. And then we'll do the same thing for this one and pick one we want. I'm going to pick, there we go. And that's really about it. It's similar to the video. It's a little bit different. I had the keyframes set differently. You actually still have a little bit of water peeking out here. I really don't like that. So we're going to change that modifier. And we're going to raise the solidify and this is why I don't apply the solidifier because then you can't really edit easy so let's crank it to we'll do point one one yeah it's still showing that's better and it's still there but it's a whole lot less obvious that way I don't like going too big because you can get really really weird distortion now to go ahead and render it out go ahead and click on your render tab Change it to GPU if you have a dedicated graphics card. 
crank this up to 100, pick where you want to save it, and then just like in the previous video, if you prefer to do it as a solid movie, click FFMPEG, change the encoding to whichever you like, but MP4 is usually the best because everybody has codecs for it. Change the encoding speed to whichever you like. I like biggest because it's fast and I'm not too worried about hard drive space. This isn't particularly a big file. And then high quality. If you decided to use a glass shader on this versus the glossy shader, you might get some fireflies, little white specks everywhere. Go down to your sampling and change the direct to one and the indirect to one as well. It's actually good practice to go ahead and do that. And as far as your samples go, if you want a lower sample time, time or a lower render time, you could probably change it to about 90. It will not really change the look too much. If you're not sure, you can change the the actual preview to whatever you want to render it at. And you can't really tell a difference. So even 50 might work for a render, and that will help speed that along quite a lot. And then under performance, if you have a pretty powerful GPU with a good amount of RAM, 8 gigs or more, you can actually change this to 512 if you have 8 gigs. If you have less than that, keep it at 256 each. And then you just hit animate. Oh, I forgot one thing. See, doing this live. We forgot to set up our camera. So while you're in rendered view, or any view really, hit zero, and you're going to be looking through your camera. Then hit shift F to move the camera around in kind of a first person. So you would hit your ASWD keys to go forward, back, left, and right. And then to go down is Q, and to go up is E. Shift also makes you run doesn't make you run. That That was a silly statement. It makes it go quicker like a first person shooter would. And there we go. Then go ahead and hit animation. Alright, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I am more than willing to help anybody out. And if you can, post your work. Drop a link in the comments for, to your channel of this video you made, and I'd love to see it. Other than that, have a good day.